Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. As a professional dog trainer, I focus a lot on the science behind dog training. And there's a lot of elements of psychology that applies both to humans and to dogs and to various other creatures and animals. And it's really important in my training that we use science, psychology, and welfare studies in our training plans. That way we're able to train our dogs the most humane, effective, and science-backed way possible. Because of this, one of the very first things I teach new clients is reward markers. And specifically for this video, we're gonna be talking about the clicker. You may be familiar with a clicker already. In fact, you might have one collecting dust in the junk drawer somewhere. And the problem that I find the most often with people and their introduction to clickers is they know that it has something to do with training. Maybe a trainer recommended it to them. Maybe someone on YouTube recommended a clicker to them. Maybe they found it in a pet store under the training section. But there's not always that follow through of how to use a clicker, what the click means, and how that benefits your training. So consider this your clicker crash course, and hopefully this helps to clear up some of the mystery behind clickers, so that way you can better implement it into your training regimen. Clickers are a really great training tool in order to capture the exact second that our dog does the thing we want them to do, and it's also used in a variety of training scenarios. It's not just used for dog training, it's also used for cat training. You might also notice at zoos that the trainers frequently use clicker training with their animals, whether that be the penguins or sea lions or tigers or bears. Most of them, if not all of them in accredited zoos, use a clicker or some other form of reward marker in order to get their training and handling done. So if the science works for lions and tigers and bears, it'll work for your dog. So why is it so beneficial to use a clicker or a reward marker? A clicker is a form of reward marker, and a reward marker is an external stimulus that lets your dog know that they did the thing we want them to do. I say external stimulus. For most people, this is a click or a word like yes or good. For some disabled dogs, this might be a flashing light if they can't hear, or it could be a touch on the shoulder if they can't see or hear. There's a lot of different ways of creating a reward marker, but the key component that we wanna focus on is reward marker means something that lets your dog know that's the thing we wanted them to do, that's why they're getting the reward. Why is a reward marker important? Because timing and training is so important, especially as you start getting into more advanced things or start utilizing shaping more in your training. Shaping is rewarding for incremental steps towards your goal. So for example, if you're trying to teach your dog to give you a high five, you might start by rewarding your dog just for lifting their paw and then for hitting anywhere near your hand, maybe your wrist might be close enough to get that reward. And over time, we get more and more particular. So you're able to just shoot your hand right up and and they know this is the target they're aiming for. In a perfect scenario, if you are training your dog the most efficiently, the quickest, the easiest, without the use of a reward marker of any kind, you would need to have that treat or that reward given at the exact second that your dog does the thing you want them to do. Dogs already have a pretty short window of time where they understand the correlation between their action and the treat. And in order to make our training as precise and effective as possible, we need that timing to be spectacular. An example of this is if you ask your dog to sit, the second their butt hits the ground, that treat is going to be in their mouth. For sit, this is pretty possible. And there's a handful of other training skills where this is doable. But as we get more and more advanced, or as we start working on more and more particular training skills, this can get a lot trickier. And that's why having a reward marker can be so helpful. To use another example, if I'm teaching my dog focus, where I'm asking them to look up at my face, rather than waiting for that immediate second they look up at my face and immediately having that treat in their mouth, they can look up at my face, I can hit a button or say yes or good, and then I can take my time getting my treats out of my pocket and delivering it to my dog. They still correlate, their eyes popping up to my face is the reason they're getting that treat. And they're a little bit more patient and graceful when it comes to actually handing that over. Because sometimes it's not the easiest thing in the world. The whole concept of clicker training comes from classical conditioning. And you might be more familiar with classical conditioning when we talk about Pavlov's dog. Once upon a time, a Russian psychologist named Ivan Pavlov was researching a group of dogs and he was actually measuring how much saliva was generated from these dogs. So his assistant would come into the room with food, the dogs would drool, and they'd actually just measure the drool. This was a fine study, but it opened a lot of doors in the world of psychology and in animal behavior as well, because Ivan Pavlov noticed that the dogs would start to drool 
when they heard the assistant's footsteps in the hallway. This means that the dogs heard the footsteps and understood that that means that dinner was coming. So instead of starting to drool when they saw the food, they started to drool when they heard those footsteps anticipating the food coming. Once he picked up on this, he changed the experiment so we were no longer measuring drool and instead we were using a metronome in place of the assistant's footsteps. In some versions of this, they use a bell instead of a metronome. But what they ended up doing was using that sound, whether it be a bell or a metronome, and pairing that with the arrival of food. So the dogs would hear that metronome or that bell and start to drool and have all of these endorphins spike because they associated that so strongly with the presence of food. That's exactly what we're doing with the clicker. I've had a number of people over the years take a clicker in their hand, point it at their dog like it's a remote, and click the button while they said sit, anticipating their dog to sit at the click of a button, and unfortunately that's not quite how the clicker works and that's not quite how dog training works. In order for the clicker to be helpful to us, you need to create an association between the sound of the click and the arrival of food or another high value reward. In order to achieve this, I always tell my clients to go ahead and take their clicker, give it a quick click, and immediately pop a treat in their dog's mouth. With this, we want the transaction to happen fairly quickly, so it's nice to have them engaged with a nice tasty treat, already locked and ready to go. Typically, I'll have them do this about 10 times in a row in order to start building that association, and usually by the seventh-ish time, they'll start to notice that that clicker clicks and their dog is immediately looking towards their hand with the food, anticipating their reward. This starts to show us that that association is being created. They're starting to understand when that thing makes a sound, I'm going to get food. And that's exactly what we want when we're dealing with reward markers. Now, there is one downside, if it is even a downside, to using a reward marker, and that's a reward marker like a clicker, or a word like chip, or yes, or good, they're all promises. It's a promise that food is coming, and if we break down that promise, it becomes less reliable, it's not going to work in the future. So that means that if you're working with a clicker, and you accidentally click it, or you step on it, or a kid gets a hold of it, it's in your best interest for training to continue to reward every time that clicker clicks. So that way, again, as you do your training, as you get more advanced in your training, you have that very, very strong association between a click and a treat. If you get to the point where that clicker goes off and there's like a 50-50 chance that they get a treat or a 75% chance they get a treat, your dog's gonna stop relying on that clicker with that strong association that we want. And that's going to slowly start to dole down its effect and make our training take a little bit of extra time in the long run. With that said, if you're working on something and maybe your hands are too full or you're just too overwhelmed trying to learn something new, it's totally okay to give a treat without clicking. You can always give treats without clicking, that's totally fine. If your hands are full, you can still give treats. If you forget to click, you can still give treats. You just can't do the opposite. You can't click without having those treats to back it up. And then one of the questions I get very commonly when I introduce clicker training to someone for the first time is do they always have to use the clicker? And the answer is no. Clickers are really, really helpful when you're first teaching a skill because dogs don't speak English. We can't just explain what we want them to do. So the use of a clicker helps us get very, very precise in capturing the things that our dogs are doing that we want them to do more of. Once they've already learned that skill and they're really good at it, then we can start to fade out the clicker because they already have a really good understanding of what sit means. They don't need you to click every time their butt hits the ground anymore because they already know what sit means. Or they don't need you to click as soon as their attention comes up to your face because they already have that strong association because we've worked on it so much that I look up at your face when you ask and then I'm gonna get rewarded for that in one way or another. The very last thing that I'll talk about when it comes to clicker training is options beyond clickers. I've worked with some dogs where a clicker like this is too much for that dog. Maybe they're a little bit nervous, they're scared, they're timid, they don't like loud noises. A clicker like this in those scenarios might unintentionally do more harm than good if they start to associate training sessions with that big scary noise that they don't like. So there's a couple of solutions to this. The first one is the type of clicker that you choose. My favorite clickers are these little button clickers. That's why these are the ones that I have available for my clients. These ones are really nice because they aren't super loud. They're definitely still crisp and clean. They're also 
really ergonomic in the hand and easy to press. There are box clickers where it, it's a box shaped, it's usually rectangular, and you can usually see the metal that makes that click sound. Box clickers I find to be a little bit less ergonomic, so it's more difficult for people, especially with arthritic hands, to hold on to sometimes. But they're also a lot louder. If you have a dog that's more sensitive to noises, that louder clicker might be too much, whereas you might be able to get away with this one. The other option, if you already have a clicker more similar to this, you can cover your whole hand over it when you click and that'll dampen the sound. You can also have it behind your back instead of out in front of you. You can keep it in a pocket and that can help dampen the sound as well if it's too much for your dog. If even that is gonna be too much for your dog, still too scary of a noise, uh, you can use a pen and click your pen and that can be a, a no cost or low cost option for a clicker as well. You just want that consistent sound. And then last but not least, if a clicker of any kind having something in your hand is too difficult for you, or if the noises are too much for your dog, you can always go with a verbal cue. With your verbal cue, you want to try to pick something that you don't use all the time. I'd say the more common verbal reward markers are yes or good, and for some people these work really well because they're more in tune with how they use those words. But if you find that you're somebody who uses yes and good often with your dog and not always in a training context, you might wanna get a little bit more creative. Dogs don't know English, so you can really pick whatever words or phrase you would like, as long as it's quick, snappy, and in a neutral tone. For example, I have a client that was doing rally training and they chose chip for their word. It's short, it's easy, it stays in a neutral tone, and it's not something that they say to their dog very often, so they can't accidentally lessen the meaning of the word chip. Personally, with my dogs, I use both a verbal reward marker and a clicker, so that way those times where I don't have a clicker on me, or maybe my hands are full because I'm trying to teach something very intensive, I still have that to rely on. And you can teach a verbal reward marker the same way that you teach your clicker. So that would be, for example, if we choose chip, saying chip, immediately popping a treat in your dog's mouth, saying chip, immediately popping a treat in your dog's mouth, and so on and so forth. Hopefully this video demystifies clicker training and maybe you're gonna feel more confident going into your junk drawer and giving it a try with your dog in your next training session. If you have any other questions about clicker training, feel free to leave those down in the comments below. And if you have any other questions about training in general or the science behind training, let me know as well. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. I've even got my really fun Skinner and Pavlov training shirt from Woof Culture for any of those that were trying to read this the whole video. There you go.